In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. It is again Sunday. It is the Lord's Day. And as we are gathered together, we offer this Mass as a thanksgiving for all the goodness, the blessings of the Lord. At the same time, we lift up to Him all our cares and concerns, knowing that God is a Father who cares for us, who loves us, and who is so generous in blessing us. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and be sorry for them. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me to, to the, the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God. to God's people all earth. We praise you, we bless you, we, we adore, adore you, you, we, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, God Son of the, the Father, Father, you take, take away the sins of the world, world. have mercy on us. You take, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord 
while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. With you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going, about, going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You too, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, 
because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. Once again, we are together this Sunday. And this is the Lord's Day. So it's just right for us to gather together as one family and offer our prayers. Today's readings are all about our narrow sense of justice. Men... We, we have our own idea of what is just or justice and what is fair or fairness. So the reading is about this. Our man's understanding of justice in contrast to the extravagant grace of our God. While God is both just and merciful, God's mercy often seems, in our view, to override His justice as God pardons us unconditionally and rewards us with generosity or generously by offering that gift of salvation to His chosen people first, the Jews, and then later to the Gentiles. In the first reading, Isaiah, speaking to the people near the end of the exile, challenges them to turn from their wicked ways and seek the Lord who is merciful and gracious. Isaiah urges the exiles to look at their lives and realize that there is still time to repent from their sins and turn toward the ever kind and forgiving, forgiving God. Instead of going back to their former land and lifestyle, God wants the people to seek on how they can restore their relationship with God. The Lord reminds the people that the divine plans are vastly different from human plans, human ways. And the Lord said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. The psalm picks up the theme of God's compassion and kindness. The psalmist today sings a hymn of praise of the God who is ever near who is ever near slow to anger and of great kindness it is important for us to reflect especially as we realize how often we have sinned and missed being part of God's plan 
Saint Paul in the second reading today writes to his beloved community in Philippi. He brought them to know the Lord Jesus. He speaks of his own desire to finish his ministry and to be one with Jesus forever on the other side of human life and death. That means to be with Christ in heaven. Yet, faithful to his mission, he is willing to continue to fulfill the calling which he has received from God. And his calling is to spread the good news to as many people and to as many places as he can. Remember that St. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. He was a missionary to the Gentiles and he has visited so many places in the Western world. Today's gospel, we can summarize as you have heard and Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a land owner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. The parable speaks of the vineyard owner who hires workers to labor in the vineyard. The owner promises a fair wage to all whom he hires. Mabibigay siya ng sweldo na tama para sa lahat na kanyang tinawag. Some are hired at the break of dawn, early morning, madilim-dilim pa. So, tinawag niya yung mga manggagawa. Since there's still plenty of work to be done, he hired more workers. Lababas ulit siya in the mid-morning, then noon, midday, then mid-afternoon, and finally, just before sunset. At the end of the day, all the workers come in and are paid starting with the last hired. Those who have worked only an hour, yung mga nasa before sunset lang, tinawag, binigyan sila ng full day's pay. Those who have worked early in the morning and in maybe in the mid-morning, they all expect to receive the same or better or greater than those who were hard the last on the day. So those who have worked all day see how generous the owner was with the workers who labored only an hour. So they expect that they will receive at least better or bigger than the ones who work only one hour. And yet they receive the same single day's pay. With that, they complain to the owner for being unfair to them. Unfair. Haven't we have heard that protest many times? That's not fair. Life is unfair. Or God's not fair. Children on the playground shout when they detect a foul play, especially when they are cheated in the games. That's not fair. Siblings doing household chores may complain, I am doing more work. Ako na ang nagugas ng plato. Ako na naglinis ng bahay. Siya, munti pa, tulog-tulog lang. That's not fair. Students at school may resent the extra attention given to the classmate. At sabihin nila, she's the favorite of the teacher. That's not fair. A brother thinks his piece of pie is smaller than his sister's. Lalo na pag mayroong cake at nag-slice ng cake, medyo mas malaki yung isa kasi sa kapatid. At yung makita yung isa, mas malaki sa kanya, nagre-reklamo. That's not fair. Or sometimes sa bahay makita natin yung favoritism. Yung isa may chocolate, yung isa ay snow bear lang. <laughs> Na-candy. 
So reklamo yung kapatid. That's not fair. Let's see yung mga taxpayers. No? Sabi nila, we work so hard, we labor, then we paid our taxes. Then yung mga patambay-tambay lang, sila pa yung unang nakatanggap ng SAP, especially during pandemic. That's not fair. No? When we read the gospel parable from the human point of view, or from the laborer's point of view, we think that the landowner committed injustice, that he's not fair to the workers. It seems that even monkeys, if they could read, would get indignant about this parable of the workers in the vineyard. There was an intriguing report from the University of Atlanta in the U.S. called Monkeys Want to See Justice Done. <laughs> Yung mga unggoy, no? Monkeys, they want to see justice done. At the University of, of Atlanta, researchers have been testing capuchin monkeys. They gave them the task of picking up a small granite stone and bring it to the researcher within one minute. If they were successful, they were rewarded with the, with the wage of a slice of a cucumber. The scheme worked well. It was happy, a happy situation as long as its monkey received the same wage. This turned sour when the researchers varied the pattern. They tried giving one monkey a grape for its reward. Others were given banana or other things. Then, indignation broke out. Nagalit yung ibang mga unggoy. <laughs> Kasi yung iba, bakit may grapes? Isa, bakit may banana? Ako, cucumber lang. So, doon sa study, nagwala. No? Galit ang mga unggoy. And they had kind of protested, nag-strike ang mga ongoy. No? It had offended their sense of justice. So yung mga ongoy pala ay merong sense of justice. That is almost human, isn't it? No? Parang human na rin mga ongoy. So we are happy with our lot until we see someone in a similar situation who is better off, better than us, then, only then that we cry foul. That's not fair. We want to go on strike and demand an end to such monkey business. So yung story ng ating parable today ay parang monkey business. Not fair to everyone. What really bothers us in the parable is God's equal rewarding of laborers no? who are latecomers or newcomers. We are tempted to ask the question, is it fair that we, the hard-working Christians, are going to be treated like those workers who are just newcomers or latecomers? Is the man who lived a life of sin, but who converts on his deathbed, going to get the same reward that we receive? So that's, that is the question, especially for us translating the parable into our spiritual life. Tayo naghirap, naging mabait na kristyano, mula nang simula pa lang, bata pa lang tayo, hanggang ngayon, masipag tayo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Then yung iba, pabonjing-bonjing lang, no? kung ano mga ginawang kasalanan, kalukuhan sa buhay. Dawn at the 11th hour, during their deathbed, humingi ng sorry kay Lord, no? payak-iyak, nagrepent, pinatawad, naligtas, nasa langit na ngayon. So we are envious 
because we worked so hard in the vineyard of the Lord. Pero bakit the same yung kanyang reward sa mga bago lang nagbalik loob sa Panginoon? That is the point of the gospel today. So people expect that we be rewarded with at least a higher ranking in heaven on a cloud with the Apostle Paul or Moses or one of the saints. No? We expect na tayo papunta rin sa langit at doon meron tayong mansion. Sila siguro bahay kubo lang. So that's our thinking. That's our idea of justice. But the parable actually is not talking about human justice or human idea of what is fair. But the parable tells us that our heavenly reward is not something we can earn because it is a free gift from God who has made His rewards available to all who choose to receive His gift of faith in Christ Jesus. So, the same ang reward. Yung mga taong tumatanggap in faith receiving Jesus in their life. At kung paano nila sinunod ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Is nabuhay ang kalooban ng Panginoon. It is not something that we earn because we have done something good. No? It is because God loves us and He gives it freely to us. Pure gift. Nothing that we do that we deserve it. Nothing that we do that will merit it. It is a pure gift of the Lord. So we ask, is it fair that God offers and gives His grace to all? Some remark that it was because God is not fair. Yes, God is not fair. Because God does not work on the same fairness level on which we humans operate. We want things equal and fair. God is more than fair. God is generous. God is willing to forgive each and every individual, no matter how long they have been sinning or not sinning. The Lord Jesus will give every person what they need to enjoy the fullness of God's kingdom if they are willing to go to work in His vineyard. I think the word fair or fairness is wrong. It's a wrong word. God does not deal with us fairly and it is a good thing. We should be thankful that God does not give us what we deserve. Because all of us, we sinned. We are sinners. If God gives us what we deserve, then we will be in pain, we will be suffering, we will be in hell. But thanks be to God, He does not deal with us fairly because, or He does not deal as, with us as we deserve. Because God is good. God is generous. Actually, the word here is grace. And what is grace? The answer is, it is the undeserved love. Grace is undeserved love. Gift or grace are, is the same. It is the undeserved love, undeserved, unconditional love of God shown through us through the death of Jesus his son. I find it interesting that when the owner of the vineyard went searching for workers in the late afternoon, he asked those still standing around looking for work, why do you stand idle all day? The response was, because no one has hired us. It was not because they did not want to work. It was because they had not been given the opportunity to work. Some people are not given the opportunity to experience the fullness of God's generosity until late in their lives. God will not hold back His, his compassion and mercy 
from them simply because they had never been given the opportunity to be a part of God's work until late. Something else strikes me is that God has been overly generous towards me. His mercy to me, towards me. His love, His goodness towards me. That's what I see in the parable today. It's not about the laborers or unfairness or equality. It's about how God is so generous in dealing with me. I don't deserve God's kindness. None of us do. But God has already extended His forgiveness to me over and over again. Despite my sinfulness, despite my unfaithfulness, He always extends His forgiveness towards me. That's why with this parable, I rejoice. I must rejoice in God's desire to reconcile everyone, not only me, but also others. If others, even in their last moment, even in their deathbed would change, then I have the reason to rejoice because they too experience God's goodness the way I experience it personally. I must rejoice that God wants to reconcile everyone for I have been reconciled many times in my life. I will not be envious to others. I would be happy that all of us will go to heaven. God wants us to be part of his kingdom more than we want it. God is much more than fair. He's generous and gracious. The Psalms summarizes it well. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all God's creatures. The question is, have you experienced God's goodness in your life? Have you experienced how generous God was to you and you're not deserving it? It is an underserved gift of God to you because he loves you unconditionally? Then, second question for you, are you envious when you see others being blessed by God? Or do you rejoice because you see how God is generous to everyone. May you continue to receive in the loving kindness of our God who teaches out to people throughout their lives so that they will respond to the divine call to come and work in the Lord's vineyard. Amen. Please rise. We profess our faith to God as we say and believe in one God. Heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father, Father and the, the Son is adored, adored and glorified, glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Jesus reveals to us the Father who is good to all His children and who is not outdone in generosity. Full of confidence, we pray to Him. Loving Father, hear our prayer. that church leaders and laity alike may zealously work in the Lord's vineyard, content with the promise of heavenly reward, we pray. That government leaders, policy makers, and businessmen may answer the people's needs for more decent employment, we pray. Loving Father, hear us that labor and management may settle issues through honorable and peaceful bargaining and dialogue, we pray. Loving Father, That family members may realize the importance of each other and the need for daily dialogue and encounter with one another, we pray. that those who have died may see God's eternal embrace of peace and lead them to the everlasting life, we pray. Loving Father, hear our Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, may your providence not lead us to self-righteousness and selfishness, but to selfless love for all. Make us generous like you, that we may live fully and bring others to life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you so loved the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Honesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
full of trust in God's goodness when I pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Which is the sign of peace. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the Lamb's Supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. You have received Jesus in your heart in a spiritual way. 
You may not be able to receive him in Holy Communion, body and, and divinity, or bread and wine. Nevertheless, you received him with your desire. He is now in your heart. Join me to thank the Lord. Thank Him. Not only for the things that He did to us, but thank Him for who He is to us. Yes, Heavenly Father, I thank You that You are not a God who is fair. You do not deal with me as I deserve. You do not treat me as I deserve. Because that's the idea of fairness. But you deal with me, Lord, in my sinfulness. With your mercy. With your grace. With your unconditional love. It's hard for me to understand how you can love me unconditionally. No conditions at all. I don't understand how you accept me, Lord, with all my checkered past. It's hard for me, Lord, to understand of your graciousness in my life. But I experience it, Lord, many times. I feel it many times. When you just love me. Not because I have done something good. Not because I am good. You just love me, Lord. And you have forgiven me many times. As many times I have sinned against you, I failed you, being unfaithful to you, yet so many times you also have forgiven me. Every time I, I say sorry to you, that I repent, that I detest my sins, you always forgive me. Every time I go to the sacrament of confession, There I receive your mercy and forgiveness. And I get out free again. How many times, Lord, you have freed me from my sinfulness? Countless. I cannot remember, Lord, how many times. That's how you are, Lord. You are not fair. You are gracious. You are generous. You are unconditional love. Many times I complain. Life is not fair. You are not fair because of the many problems in my life, because of the many challenges that come to me. But now in the gospel, I realize, Lord, how good you are full of mercy and compassion. And so, Lord, accept my gratitude, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are to me. And as I look at others, Lord, let, it, let, let me not be envious to their blessings, to what they receive in life, especially those you have forgiven also. You have saved from the brink of death from the edge of sin and darkness. I will rejoice, Lord, because we are all brothers and sisters. We are your family. And so, Lord, I lift up to you right now all my brothers and sisters who are suffering financially, who are sick in the hospital because of COVID or other illness, who are suffering emotionally, who are depressed, 
feeling despair and hopeless because of their situation in life. I lift them up to you, Lord, those who are bedridden. I lift up to you right now, our family, our loved ones, the health. I lift up to you right now, Lord, the people in all those places in the world who are in need of your love, unconditional love. Let them experience, Lord, how I experience your unconditional love in my life. And I thank you, Lord. And my words are not enough to thank you. I thank you all the days of my life. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.